not real drummers. We just pretend to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good well, good morning, Gigi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well now. All right. I know y'all can't hear me, but just give me a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, back, cool. Back, oh, go ahead. back in the day when you went to church, the church ladies always had a, always had a little white handkerchief they put over their knees. Y'all don't know anything about that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here we are. Yes, here we are. And uh, let's light a candle. Lighting a candle just sort of sets the mood for something pure. Don't you agree? You can say, you can, y'all can talk back. Yes, yes, we encourage y'all to talk back. <laughs> That's how it's done where we come from. Yes, yes. All right. So, yeah, it was uh, Gigi's idea. You know, I wanted to have, we wanted to have a little conversation today. Um, other, you know, besides just going over black Americans and their contributions to inventions and um, various other institutions in our country, we thought it'd be good to have a conversation about how we in particular came to unity and how the black church has moved or many black Americans have moved from the traditional black church to unity thought. And the reason why. Yes, yes. And also the, um, the source of our spirituality before we came to America and how that exactly. relates to unity. I can't wait to hear your talk on that. Absolutely. Thank you. So black folk moved to new thought for a reason. And first of all, let's just get on the same page with what new thought is. Uh, New thought goes back as far as Phineas Quimby. And those of us in unity know that name, Quimby. He was an American folk healer, mentalist, and mesmerist. You'll understand that mesmerist in just a moment. His work is widely recognized and foundational to New Thought and the spiritual movement. Now, let's go even further back than than, um, Quimby. Go back as far as Franz uh, Mesmer. That's where Quimby got his teaching from. He was a German physician with an interest, interest in astronomy. He theorized that the existence of a process of natural energy transference occurring between all animate and inanimate objects. So essentially, this is what new thought is. God, there's this belief among all of us uh, in unity that God is supreme, universal, and everlasting. That's number one. There are four. Number two, divinity dwells within each and every person. We're all spiritual beings. Number three, the highest spiritual principle is, I bet you can guess it, starts with the L. Love. The highest spiritual principle is love. Love for everyone, every single one of us, is representative of God, which is love. And finally, this one, they're all important. This is the biggie. They're all big. I'll just say it. And listen, our mental states are carried forward into manifestation and become our experience in daily living. I wish I had known that way back then. You and me both, Gigi. <laughs> right? So Matt, Matt, my brother and I, we were brought up in the African um, Episcopal Church. Oh, the the AME. AME, yes, we African had some of those. Methodist Episcopal Church. And I have fond, fond memories of my grandmother taking us to church. However, as I got older, you know, there's, there was this something that seemed to be lacking. I didn't know what that was. There was a lack of an encounter, a real experience with God, a connection, a firsthand experience, the mystery, the miracle, and the wonder. 
of God. Also, <laughs> the tangible manifestation of goodness in terms of financial prosperity in our household. We, were, we had very little. We were just downright poor. Lived on a dirt street. I remember my mother, my grandmother coming from having done some house cleaning and uh, the taxi that brought her home or the ladies that she worked for brought her home and their cars got all dirty driving on that dirt street after it had rained. I have these memories. And if there had been a Unity Church in Wichita Falls, that's where I'm from, I believe through the teachings, we would have had a better life experience. The reason is because we would have had a mind shift. We would have had a spiritual awakening. Um, so this is what I want to share about the spiritual awakening. Let me get to the right page here. I'm supposed to be organized up here. <laughs> so, I, so this is really what I want to say about that. Daddy Grace, the, the, the reason, first of all, that our black American brothers and sisters were attracted to New Thought is because they wanted a better life for themselves. And there's a lady by the name of Kate Bowler. She's a well-respected scholar of the prosperity gospel. And she has written that in 1920s, 1930s, a small but significant number of black Americans drew from the new thought um, and, and the metaphysical gospel in the urban north, primarily Chicago and Detroit. Bowler writes that metaphysical gospel spread in the urban north at, from leaders like these gentlemen that you see on the screen. Sweet Daddy Grace, Prophet James Jones, Father Divine, and later on, Reverend Ike. I used to remember hearing about Reverend, Reverend Ike, not so much about the others. These preachers promised, we can go to the next slide, please. These preachers promised to smooth the rough edges of capitalism and industrialism with theologists that, in, um, that countered poverty, disease, and despair. Who wouldn't want a life change if that was the promise, right? So whatever these prosperity, prosperity gospels were talking about, then black folk were on board with that. Let me have some more of that kind of teaching. Yes. So... Um, According to Bowler, they were a, there was this cross-pollination of new thought. So there was the Pentecostalism, African uh, traditions that asserted the importance of materialism, prosperity, and religious access to what? The good life. Prosperity theology, Matt, in African-American religion was prominent by the 1970s and by the 1990s had led to an emerging generation of black prosperity preachers. They reflected on that gospel. So, Matt, I'm interested in knowing how did you come to New Thought, not only New Thought and Unity, but also take us back to, um, take us back a little bit further in our African roots, mm -hmm. pre-Christian knowledge, philosophy and beliefs, as well as its alignment with New Thought and Ancient Wisdom. Okay, well, yes, I'll do my best. All right, so I'm going to start with a couple of African words. The first one is Sankofa. And as you see up there on the screen, the symbol for Sankofa, you may have seen it many places and may not have known what it is, but it's a bird that's walking forward, but yet looking back. And this word comes from uh, Ghana, and it loosely translates to go back and fetch it. 
or go back and get it. It comes from a proverb about a beautiful bird, a beautiful bird amongst her flock. Her plumage was so beautiful. The colors were so radiant and her body was just in proportion to everything and all the birds and other flocks looked up to her like she was it, you know, says so she was all of that, a bag of chips, as we used to say, right? So um, she decided one day that she was going to go out into the world and explore what there was out there. So she flew and flew and finally came across a new community, a new flock of birds. And when she landed there, she was expecting the, the treatment that she was used to. But instead, she was sort of looked down on, like, okay, who are you and, and why do you have those colors and why do you look that way? And, oh, we don't know if we want you around. And so that beautiful bird, feeling dejected and rejected, she flew home to her flock of origin. And the other birds amongst her home flock, she, they were so... Um, sad about how in despair this bird was. She wasn't the same, the same um, as before she went out. So they got together and they decided that they were going to remind her of all of the things that made her special. All of the, her ancestors and all of the, the struggles and the efforts that they put in to make her who she was. And after this treatment, she realized you know, her real worth. So in, in summary, Sankofa is about, it's saying that it's, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with looking back. Even though you're going forward, there's nothing wrong with looking back to where you came from to move forward. Now, last year during Black History Month, I spoke a little about my personal and spiritual awakening and how that involved educating myself about black history and where we were before we came to this country. See, I was raised in the Southern Baptist Church, you know, along the same traditions as Martin Luther King. And I was taught to have pride in our incredible faith and everything that it took to endure 246 years worth of subjugation. Um, today, we would call it human trafficking on a mass scale. In, Afri in uh, Africa, they call it the ma'afa, um, and that loosely translates to the catastrophe which is you know, what we know as the Atlantic safe, um, slave trade. And I don't even like to call what we were slaves. I like to call, call us prisoners of war. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> it makes a difference in the way that you think, think about you know, yourself. So um, I was never taught anything about um, our faith before Christianity. Um, you know, because of societal messages, you know, we were not encouraged to look past that veil you know, when you were, I remember in school, you know, um, kids talking about their heritage, you know, oh, you know, I'm from Scotland and this is a kilt that I have, or I'm from this particular region. But for me, when that came up, all I had was images of like the old Tarzan movies and things like that, you know, and that was not really anything that we wanted to relate to. Um, there's nothing to look at but, you know, just prim primitive society and, and backwards pagan beliefs. But um, many of you know Reverend Michael Beckwith of the Agape uh, International Chapel. He uses a phrase that I like, and his congregation does come out of the same New Thought movement as Unity does, but he likes to call it New Thought Ancient Wisdom. And I didn't realize that African people around the continent believed in one God and one power in the universe. And much of that's been misrepresented as, as worship of many gods and that type of thing. Um, but they really had a sophisticated understanding of the laws and principles that govern our existence. Uh, the Nubians of East Africa, for example, they birthed the ancient Egyptian culture, which, you know, most people think of Africa, they think of the pinnacle as the Egyptian culture, which, you know, they had a lot to contribute to the world. But uh, they came from uh, the Nubian society, the, the, the land of Cush, depending on what time in history it was, the Cushites of the Bible that you might have remembered. Um, 
they had a, a culture that highlighted the interconnectedness of science, religion, and spirituality. They used art and um, moral codes to connect with their creator. Um, even before Galileo invented the telescope, the Dogon people of West Africa, they knew about Saturn's rings, they knew that Jupiter had four major moons and the planets that revolved around the sun. Uh, they discovered and charted the path of a star that was invisible to the naked eye. Its existence was only proven when it was photographed by Western astronomers and astronomers in 1970. So they had, you know, we had so much to contribute. And then there's the Yoruba people of Nigeria, which I've been able to trace my roots back to. They believed in universal energy and that you could speak and affirm things into existence. So it's just nice to know that um, in America, even as a fund fundamentalist Christian, there are other cultures that we look to and admire for their spirituality. You know, there's the Native Americans that we look at and we admire their spirituality, or the Hindus, or um, various other people around the world. We, even if we don't agree with it or you know believe in everything, we we give reverence to that spirituality, and it's just nice to know that you know that we had something to uh, refer to from where we came from. So last year I talked about the word Ashe which um, is sort of a three, uh, three-fold word. It can um, be used at the end of a prayer, uh, like amen, something you say at the end of a prayer, amen, you would say ashe. Um, it's also used to refer to the energy in the universe that connects us all. Um, in uh, Indian culture, it's called prana. In um, certain Asian cultures, it's called chi. But in, um, in that culture, it's called ashe. It's the energy, the force, if you will, that connects everything. And then there's the third meaning, um, ashe, the power to speak things into existence, um, to affirm things into existence, which, as we see, is very compatible with what we believe in and, and practice in unity. Absolutely. And yes. The essence of the spoken word is divine power, wisdom, infinite creativity. It's a faculty of God given to each and every one of us. Now, let's go into a moment of silence that brings us into our divinity that each of us knows. Relax by simply closing your eyes or focusing on something pleasant in the room. Always lower your shoulders because we are holding tension that we are even unaware of in this moment. So lower your shoulders away from your ears and breathe. We're going to take three collective breaths together, uniting us even in our breathing. Breathe in and exhale. Let's do that again. Breathe in and breathe out. We are present in this moment. We can feel the weight of our body on the seat. We feel the air circulating around us. Breathe. Whatever thought, feeling, or image that may come to your mind. Let it be. Its appearance does not distract you from this moment. Treat that thought, 
feeling image like a cloud and simply watch it pass away. No need to hold on to it. You're not identified by anything. Not anything. Materialistic or otherwise. There is no thing that's worthy of keeping in this moment. It, like the clouds, will simply fade away. It'll fade away one day, but you are pure spirit in form. You will never fade away. Your mind is your servant, not your master. Remember that. Notice that you're not striving in this moment. You're not creating anything. And there is nothing to control. Nothing to change. Breathe. Love, peace, and serenity is your essence. You are the stillness in the midst of chaos. You don't even have to believe that. Just know it. And know that all is well. Know that we are all one. Breathe. Slowly and gradually bring your attention back to this time and space. Wiggle your fingers, your toes, and when you're ready, open your eyes. Now, I do hope that you learned a little something different about African Americans and our journey into new thought. But more than that, I hope you know and recognize that only in our humanity are we separated by race, creed, color, sexual orientation, or anything else. Truly, we are all one at the core of our being. Ashe and Amen. Ashe. Okay, so this is the part of the service where we call to ask for you to share of your good. Um, I affirm open channels of flow of abundance coming and going within our community. We have many ways to give. You may donate um, via text, um, come up here to donate. Uh, we have many ways for you to share. So as we share our divine good and affirm our connectedness, our unity, and our love, we pray that divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. All right, so we're looking forward to seeing each of you back next week. So before we go, why don't we all stand up? Let's join hands, and we're going to do our peace song together.
as we all come together in this space of love and joy and just love. <laughs> yes, exactly. We affirm our interconnectedness and our unity as we uh, give our prayer for protection. This time at the end, I'd like to hear a real big ashe. All right. We'll do a call and response. So I'm going to say the, the light of God surrounds us. I am the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Ashe. Amen. <laughs>